Every haunted place has a story with a dark past. This is Ghost Encounters Podcast. Welcome back, all you spooky people, to the Ghost Encounters Podcast. I am paranormal investigator Justin Torok. And I'm Jordan, the group scientist. I'm Hannah, your death-obsessed bestie. We have a very special guest today. He's been on the podcast before. Please welcome Jeff Achenzi. Thank you, Justin, Jordan, Hannah, for having me again. (laughs) Of course. The last time you came on, we talked about, uh, you know, the the horror places that you visited, because you're a big horror enthusiast. Still am. And as we all are here, and probably our listeners as well. And we also discussed those uh, the double like Christmas murder yep. uh, that happened right here in Bethlehem. Yeah, and Christmas so we're going to stick with this uh, local theme in our area, the Lehigh Valley. This is a Lehigh Valley Killers podcast episode. I just want to make another announcement again. Greenway Pride is May 18th. We are sponsoring. Come out and meet us. We will have our Ghost Encounters Pride merch for sale. It's going to be awesome. Get and... I just want to hear from Jeff a little bit. What have you been up to since last po- last podcast episode? I know you started a podcast yourself. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. So what have I been up to? First of all, um, I found the creepiest place on earth. <laughs> yes. Um, I know most people are looking for it. Uh, some people actively. Uh, but no, I found it uh, for sure. And I immediately had to text Justin uh, that, I, that I was done. Hook us up. Um, Hook us up. <laughs> yes. So the, uh, the, the wife drug me along to Paris. And uh, so I'm a huge history person to begin with. So we were doing the usual touristy sites and uh, the Paris catacombs, the underground. Oh, so cool. uh, came on my radar and I really didn't know much about it. Uh, so read about it and thought this sounds really creepy and weird. Okay, I'll go until you're there. Uh, I never wanted to be out of a place more in my life than wow. when you cross the threshold into the actual uh, aerial chambers. Is it is it just like a bad vibes thing? Is it a smell thing? Uh, bad vibes. Really? Uh, every ounce of me wanted me out of that place wow. uh, from the moment you and because you actually have to go about maybe a quarter to a third of a mile before you actually get to the the, the doorway the land of the dead oh is it that far in yeah it's about a half mile wow. all they get so you're going a pretty good ways of just like explaining what this was and the underground and the wall and then suddenly you know you can see like land of the dead here's the door you're going to enter right and you're still not thinking it's gonna be like the pictures or what you know it's gonna be and it is just worse <laughs> um, I mean it, it's just shoulder high nothing but bones and femurs and skulls uh, just inches away from you as far as the eye can see as deep as you can see um, it's something like four million uh, claustrophobes wow. do not enter and yeah I wouldn't survive <sighs> I, I, I didn't want to touch anything. Like, it, it, a couple points, yeah, you just sort of have to walk with tunnel vision. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them, where they were stacking uh, skulls, they made uh, artistic designs. So mm-hmm. there were, like, hearts and crosses and stuff that, that people were making as they were moving the bones. Uh, we got into one section. Uh, they, they talk about how it obviously is a living uh, like memorial type place, so don't touch anything. Yeah. Right. And uh, we, I did see one gentleman just, you know, touching a skull. And I was oh, this moment of uh, like, can you please not disturb the dead while I'm standing next to you? <laughs> yeah, right. I don't need, don't I don't need to see me. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm also a person, my impulse is like to touch stuff, but I feel like this is human remains, and yeah. after a point, yeah. you gotta like rein it in and try and yeah, be respectful. Guess, yeah, <laughs> like the every fiber of your beat, like nothing would allow my hand to do that. <laughs> and, uh, you, you get through the other end and just like looking at my wife like I never want to do that again <laughs> um, uh, the sun is real <laughs> oh yeah and you are about oh god I forget how many I think you're a hundred yards underground Fuck yeah. and I know once or twice you pass uh, points where you can like look up to the parish street oh, and, uh, and realize how far underground you, you are I love and, that. Um, aggressively yep 
Um, I did come home and watch uh, As Above. So below. oh no, you should have um, watched that. Yes, yeah, so I did watch that, and it like <laughs> made it so much like yeah, more scary. beautiful. But um, wasn't there like relatively recently? Wasn't there a guy who like wandered into the Paris catacombs? Like I think that was a story. Like, yes, not not and like like a phone. recent one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he he, he I think got a lost. A couple and people like, went missing down there, though. Yeah. So like, is it like it is in those stories where there's just endless tunnels yes. and you could totally get lost? Like they haven't mapped it all out. And stuff yeah, like that? there were definitely spots that were completely gated off. Like not this is outside the bones sections, right? Don't um, fuck around. Here. But there were parts where you could just look into nothingness, mm. and wow. like I remember, <laughs> I don't know if that was scarier than the bones. Like, yeah, just looking at just that. knowing that the, yeah. who knows what's down these tunnels and who yep. knows how far they go. Yep, it just so it was it, it was wonderful. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so if you are uh, no, I found it. I cannot I imagine. Like I've been to places and crime scenes, and I always talked. I was in like the one of the witches' circles in Salem, next to the oldest like cemetery, like right. and oh, felt yeah. weird vibes and stuff that nothing on earth like being <laughs> in those catacombs. Wow. That's, I, I'm not going to lie to you, that's like one of the places that I have on my list. I know, like, same. Places that I, I'm trying to get CJ to take me on our honeymoon, and he's like, not about it. <laughs> I agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean to go. You've always wanted to go to Paris, though. I do, but to see but the maybe fucking not. Eiffel Tower, not to go see a bunch of bones and oh my God. in the crust of the earth. I'm here like, for I'm the good. bones. <laughs> I'm here for the bones. The That's what she Hannah. said. That's, it is. It is. I said it. I'm she. I said it. <laughs> and on the uh, other side, yeah, I got somehow uh, roped into hosting a podcast. Cool. Um, oh, yeah, man. It, it's one of those, I, I can't say no. And um, I, I like tech, and I like challenges and solving puzzles and stuff. So I actually, since we last, or I was last here, I'm the coordinator for sports streaming for Easton School District now. Nice, uh, awesome. So over like 200 sporting, and most of it's auto, excuse me, automated cameras and whatnot. Um, but out of that, then it was, well, can you do commentary for football? And I was like. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Never planned on it. No training whatsoever. But oh, sure, I got to do that. And then I got to do it for swimming. And I got to do it for baseball. And then somebody who had been on terrestrial radio in Easton for like 50 years, the station got bought out, closed up, whatnot, and wanted to get back on and said, hey, can you get me on the air? And I was like, sure. <laughs> and like three weeks out, I like I said to the wife, uh, she does have a name. It's Treasure. But uh, it's the, the wife. And I said, I have no idea what I just agreed to. <laughs> and um, I sort of stumbled upon how it was going to happen. I do know a couple places that I thought were going to work. <laughs> they shut down. Like Spotify Live doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, no, nope, they took yeah. that And um, so we did scramble and we were able to figure out how to broadcast live on the internet. Not just through YouTube. Like I knew how to do that. But right. like, something that could be standalone podcast sort of on. And um, we're able to make that happen. So we were live like three weekends in a row covering postseason wrestling. And then that morphed into to a podcast with I think you had him as a teacher but with uh, Coach Jody Karam uh, recently yeah. or about to oh. be retired from Liberty head coach at Easton and he's been wanting to do a podcast about <clears throat> racing wrestling and real estate for a few years and um, somehow I got to be the wonderful host of the Winner <laughs> Circle with Jody Ooh. Karam that was, that was the announcer voice did you hear it? Yes. I did I did hear it yes. <laughs> it's impressive very very cool well where can people find this podcast? <laughs> okay um, so we're on all the majors uh, so it's like Spotify, Apple, Amazon. Um, the live stuff all comes. At, our hosting is Podbean Live. Um, so their app. You, anytime we go live on those broadcasts, uh, and it is J A J L Sports Radio. I am the J A of the uh, <laughs> of the J L somehow. So um, yeah. So that's how it wound up happening. Uh, people just kept asking me to do more stuff, and I don't say no. Um, so, yeah, and the wife just keeps looking at me like, what else are you going to do? I'm like, I don't know what else. Like, a year ago, I had never done broadcasting, produced stuff, grat none of it, and now I'm just, like, teaching other people, so it's fun. That's, That's cool. awesome. Yeah. Good for you, man. Congrats. It's, sometimes oh, you just you, fall man. into it. Yeah, yeah. like... I know, like I said, I don't get to talk to humans most of the time during the day or grown <laughs> humans. <laughs> grown humans. Um, so, yeah, so a chance to be creative is always fun. Yeah, that's cool. We'll oh, put yeah. the uh, links uh, in the show notes so you can go follow and listen to his podcast. Mm -hmm. 
He is a sports guy, but we all contain multitudes here. Yes, we do. <laughs> uh, and speaking of you and your life, uh, part of the reason we're doing this episode is because your dad was a police officer here in the Lehigh Valley for a very long time. Yeah, 27 years. Wow. Uh, retired now almost as long. <laughs> retired about 20, 24 years. Wow. So he's been out of the uh, police game for a while. But yeah, last time we talked an awful lot about how... I guess each person has their own journey, how you become interested in the macabre. Right. And um, I chalked it up somewhat to dinnertime stories with Dad. <laughs> and um, so that's what we talked a lot about last time, was sort of getting, uh, as an adult, looking back, realizing stories with an accident investigator father aren't everybody's, like, wow. weekend fair. Like, we talked about how, to this day, if the phone rings after, like, 9.30, uh, I just get struck with dread because in my house growing up, it meant somebody was dead. Yeah, man. Um, so dad would have to leave two in the morning, you know. So most of those horrific crashes in, like, the 90s in Bethlehem, you know, my dad was, you know, on the scene for most of them. And uh, so, yeah, like, but another side of it was sort of uncovered, and I messaged Justin and said, um, hey, I, I, if, if, you know, we said about me doing another one, uh, if I come on, can I talk about what my high school was like? Uh, because I think we lived through a very interesting time in, in the early to mid-90s uh, yeah. at Bethlehem, or Lehigh Valley, I should say. Yeah, yeah but I guess, is there a correlation to the steel shutting down and these things going on? Because it's kind of mm. around the same time. I don't think so. That's like, that's I, I know, point. I know yeah. the entire Lehigh Valley kind of went into like a bit of a like not great place for a small period of time. <laughs> that's true. An economic you know, yeah, that's of true. <laughs> thousands of people lost their jobs at once. Yeah, actually, that's true. Um, if, you, if you put it that way or think about it that way, yeah, I, I do think the prosperity of the early '80s definitely had disappeared by the early 90s. Because mm -hmm. um, the, the Bethlehem steel was still going until about 96 when the uh, furnaces turned off. I was in high school for that too, yeah. uh, when the <laughs> furnaces turned off. Yeah, um, yeah I, I do think there was that. Um, the 80s were a very high time, yeah. uh, not just because of cocaine. Um, I mean, I was a kid, <laughs> I wasn't there for that. But um, yeah, I, I think there was this uh, really, like upswing in the country in the 80s. I, I think the Cold War was sort of wrapping up. Uh, there was definitely a darker underbelly at a national level that I think we started to see. Because mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of the, the bigger serial killers that we sort of talk about were 1980s products. When you think about like Bundy or Gacy, right. like mm -hmm. they're very products of the 80s, uh, especially Bundy and like how he could just blend in as yeah, an American he, psycho, the, the, the book yeah. kind of coming out of it, yeah. not so much uh, Bundy, but yeah, I, I I think as we move into 1993, the country, it, in my mind, always seems to function best when there's a big bad for us to worry about. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, there's something to that. And for most of our parents, even though I'm older than you guys, it was always it was Russia. That was mm -hmm. an easy big bad, the Cold mm -hmm. War, and I think as that kind of fell in the late 80s and the early 90s our country didn't have a big bad anymore and everybody kind of starts infighting a little and, bit yeah everybody like they, loses their mind they, right, they there's look not for a common stuff. conflict yep. for yeah. everyone to so all the kind of, smaller conflicts and, yeah start i think this big push of like cults in the early 90s i mean obviously we're, we, we know mostly the branch davidians of waco um, mm -hmm. but it was the fear that cults was our next big bad in the country and it never 100% materialized there's a satanic panic in the 80s too yep. I think people yep. had a lot of a lot of feelings about cults from yep. from that yeah and I think what gave way to cults in the late 90s would have then been obviously 9-11 like mm -hmm. kind of puts the country back into that we have a big bad yeah and right. You know, 20 some years removed from that I feel like at least the last decade that sort of big bad has kind of gone away. I don't think it's had the same impact right after 9-11. And I, I do think our country doesn't have a big bad for the, the last Right, the only years. thing anyone can focus on now is, is politics, which yep. we're not going to get into the podcast. Yep. No, 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 no. Like, but that's, 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 no. that's the <laughs> internal kind yes. of conflict yeah. that we're having now yep. is is politics is, instead yeah. of something else. And it's an election year. We're all fucking exhausted. Yep. And I think that's <laughs> yeah. what, and I, so that's what I meant when I said I think our country <laughs> feels better when we have a general, but that was the point of Watchmen. Um, all my comic book fans out there. Oh my there. god, I love that. That was the point. Like, you yeah, could save yeah. us by giving us a big bad. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. It depends, I guess, whether or not it's the big alien thing mm -hmm. or uh, the giant squid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So take us down the road and I will yes. relive so, it with you. Well, let's get down into it. We have three big uh, murders and killings to talk about right here in our home in the Lehigh Valley. So if you're a Lehigh Valley listener, uh, listener discretion is advised. And uh, I want everyone to know that we're just presenting the info and the stories uh, of these cases. We're not making a mockery. We're not making fun. These are very serious things that happened. Um, these are awful tragedies that happened right here in our hometown. Um, so we're going to try to be as sensitive as possible. And uh, I know there's probably, a, you know, family members and people involved that are still alive to this day. And they have experienced serious loss as a yes. result of the actions of these people. Exactly. And other people who lived during this time were very scared during these times, um, just knowing that these people were out there. So we're just going to present you with the information. We're not making a mockery of this. Um, you know, there's other, you know, true crime podcasts out there. Um, so we're going to kind of take that vibe and bring it in, into this podcast. And we're going to start with Harvey Miguel Robinson. Uh, Hannah, you did some notes on those. I did. Um, so how about you and Jeff kind of, you know, take it away and kind of discuss a little bit from the, from the beginning on how these started to what happened. Okay. Well, um, I guess... Uh, do you, what do you remember, I guess? Do you have any, like, concrete yeah. memories of this one in particular? Oh, absolutely. Because I, I feel like yeah. you were, you were uh, a teenager during yeah. this. So, this start, I was 13, 14, because it, it was kind of branched two summers. What I remember most uh, about this was, and how it kind of came so forefront, was um, the second victim, who at the time, we, we didn't know, was a morning call newspaper. Yeah, snatch, yeah. snatched was, off the street. Yeah. Uh, and that's how, like, that's usually how a lot of people when they tell the story, that's where they, that's where they start. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just somebody looked outside one day and saw a newspaper, but which once again to kind of take you back to the early '90s, there were two, still are, but two major newspapers in the Lehigh Valley, and um, the Bethlehem Globe Times had just shut down and merged with the Express Times, but that that was like your sole news for the Lehigh Valley. WFMZ did exist. Um, I don't think it had as many broadcasts as it did, but um, so the morning call was everywhere. And I, I lived on the west side of Bethlehem, which a block away from the east side of Allentown. Okay. Um, so yeah, so, I, yeah, yeah, so yeah. many That's, of my memories. Yeah, it's super close. Just, just blur. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that it was like a morning call paper girl would have meant so much to so many people. Yeah, I think from what I read, uh, like a a person on her route actually yep. noticed yep. that she was not with yep. her the bike cart. There. Yeah, and uh, it was June of 1993, and so by the evening that kind of made the news, and she was found shortly after. Now she was a student at Deerf High School, mm -hmm. uh, and that was uh, Charlotte Smoyer, and um, so she was found not too far away, down around the reservoir on the bend of Hanover Avenue, mm -hmm. and within a day or so like that just took off everywhere yeah. um we were morning call subscribers so like obviously it was front page news the morning call had a whole sort of memorial thing up in her because she was one of their employees yeah. and um it's it's good that they didn't try and like cover that up mm -hmm. that they you know they were uh forthright yeah. about it and memorialized yeah. so was she the first victim of this guy no no <laughs> oh. um at the time sort of yes the the first, first, so the first known one. The first known one. Gotcha. And it just, it, it became everywhere because it was so unsolved either. Like it was just snatched at like six o'clock in the morning, found shortly after. No clues, no. That's crazy. Nothing. Just her, her bike. Just, just her bike. Laying there. Yep. Uh, and, and this happened roughly to give put you people in the Lehigh Valley. You're talking Union Boulevard and Hanover Avenue in Allentown. Oh. Uh, so two very busy roads. Yeah. It's the yeah. neighborhood. All that's between those two roads is just neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. uh, from City Line Avenue, which is Club Avenue, Bethlehem Allentown border, right to Deer of High School. And it was just nothing but homes. Mm -hmm. I mean, Union Boulevard has all the businesses and Hanover Avenue has all the businesses. Everything in between is just homes. And um, so this was just a few blocks away. And it definitely affected us uh, in our neighborhood because I, I always told Justin this, I said, it, it suddenly became the call when you get there summer. Mm. Uh, I was, like I said, 13, 14. And this is when you can start to stretch the distance you can go on your bike as a teenager. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, no mom, I can go to X, Y, or Z. 
And um, or no, mom, I'm just going to here. But yeah. really, you're going yes. twice as far. <laughs> and um, yeah. yeah. So I lived right off Pennsylvania Avenue, and Blockbuster Video is where my sister worked. Oh my god! And yeah, I know. And uh, that was back. right near the scene. So biking to Blockbuster to get a movie. I remember where that one was. It was the like that was like the furthest I could go. It was like a 15 minute ride, but it was great. Like the world opened up to you. Um, so then shortly after that though is when they start to realize like there's a pattern yeah mm -hmm. um so with what was happening was and there, there is kind of a, a warning with this as well um it was so it was june it was warm and this mm -hmm. isn't a time where um not everybody had central air and especially in like slightly older homes so the window units are just windows open yeah, i still have window units yeah like know. window it was very very i mean we never had central air in my house growing up and uh, so in a, you know, cooler evening, you know, you could just open the window, you had a screen in there, and mm -hmm. you kind of thought that was your security. And um, what was happening was the assailant, uh, other than Char uh, Charlotte Smoyer, who was taken off the street, all the other ones happened in homes. Uh, and most of the entries were made simply with just cut yeah, or knife. Yeah, you slit the screen. Just right through the screen. Yep. Um, so then attacks start happening pretty quickly. Uh, I know usually profilers talk about the cool down period sometimes with okay. homicides, and the cool down period was only a few days, it seemed. Wow. Um, to when the next attack happened. And um, so, and that was. Uh, you must have had a lot of built up anger to only have a couple days in between mm -hmm. each and just like snap once and then know that you can do it and keep going. Well, he was also like a 19 year old kid at the yeah. time. Okay. Um, this was uh, Harvey Miguel Robinson, mm -hmm. and he was 19 at the time of the murders, which mm -hmm. occurred 1992, 1993. Mm -hmm. um, and he's thought to have been one of the youngest serial yep. killers in U.S. history. Oh, yep. shit. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, his, yeah. First, his first crime, I think, was at 17. That was the one in 92, which we didn't mm, actually okay. get to yet. Yeah, so the, I guess, yeah, that's yep. a three-year span. Yep. That yeah. makes sense. And, uh, um, but there was, uh, I don't know, I... Having been a teenager, I feel like everything just moves so much faster when you're a teenager mm -hmm. and you just, like, you have all this energy, yep. you know, as a teenager. And if you're, it, that, it, if you're messed up, you got that energy. And if you're not messed up, you got that energy, you mm -hmm. know? It's, his, his pattern then, too, it, it, most of the places uh, that he had uh, hit were on multiple occasions. Mm -hmm. So uh, in one of the spots, you know, he, he would break in earlier and then would come back a few days later and actually attack people when they were home. Uh, and that's where his second attack occurred, which the house had been burglarized. And then a few days later, um, they had actually put in, this is after Charlotte Smoyer now. Mm -hmm. And um, so they had put in the home security system and it didn't uh, uh, didn't work. And she was home, wow. uh, the, uh, the woman was home alone and thought she heard something rustling and, she and did. went to leave the house and like out from the closet. Oh, Jesus um, Christ. She survived. Yeah. I mean, fought. One of his... Uh, one of the few, yeah, fought for her, her life. Let me see. I wrote down her name. Denise Sam Cali. Yes, that's yeah. Sam Cali. Yeah, Denise and, Sam Cali. Uh, yeah, like, fought for her life on her front yard. And yeah. uh, a neighbor turning on a porch light uh, scared him, uh, not scared him away, but make him, and she survived. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll get back to her in a moment. Yeah, then, she's important. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But this continued. Uh, one of the things we saw with him was he didn't want to engage with men. Um, all, all his victims were, were female. And, and there was, there was a sexual component. Yes. Yeah, he was so, sexually yeah. assaulting these women. Before and he, the uh, next one, which is just horrific, uh, same kind of ordeal, went to a house that he thought was, um, uh, a woman and her boyfriend happened to be there that night and he bypassed the bedroom and went to her five-year-old daughter's room and then sexually oh. assaulted her uh. Uh, just off because he didn't want to deal with the guy that was in the mother's bedroom. Um, and then the little girl survives that attack. I didn't um, read anything about that. Yeah, like, I mean, and the, the, fuck the sky. And, and these are, and this was all within two to three weeks. Now, not all of this was hitting the newspaper, other than they weren't finding suspects to what was happening. How it was permeating sort of our lifestyle was we knew this was our neighborhood. We knew it was blocks mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the police side of things, my dad knew the break ins were happening with just. Screen, just the, was just screens, mm -hmm. and I suddenly didn't know at my house like why the screen door 
couldn't just be open on our back porch or right. windows were closed. Uh, to this day, in fact, one of the um, attacks happened because there was an air conditioner unit running in the bedroom on the second floor oh, and geez. they were unable to hear what was happening downstairs. So most of my life we would have to sweat out the second floor because my dad refused to let the air conditioners run at night. Wow. So they do start to piece together that there was a homicide in August of 1992, which predates the Charlotte Smoyer by about 10 months. Um, that was on same area, a little closer to Deer of High School. A uh, woman lived alone in an apartment, noticed a break-in. A couple nights later, is uh, eventually attacked, sexually right. assaulted. So there's a pattern. Yeah. Was she te- Was she then like she the confirmed the, very yes. first? So she is the very first. Of the, uh, was that Joan Burkhart? Yes. Yeah. Um, so then th- this is happening very quickly through most of, well, she was near the end of June into July. Um it's definitely noticeable in my neighborhood as a kid. Uh, just the, you know, now it became, you're going to call the house you're going to before you're leaving our house, mm. and then you're calling when you're getting to the house. Mm. And um, so so we just kind of noticed it that way. Mm-hmm. Eventually how he's caught um, goes back to a house for a third time. After the second time, police started noticing, like, wow, he comes one night and then comes back. Um he and would was, never go somewhere a third time. <laughs> Except he did. That was uh, Denise Sam Cowley. Yeah, that was her, her house. Yep. Yep. They, for a few weeks, uh, snuck a police officer in at night through an alleyway back door, and someone just slept on the couch on the off chance that this was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And um, one night, the officer's laying there. He heard a little bit of, like, noise and he noticed the kitchen they actually left some windows open as bait oh, but wow. he noticed the kitchen doorknob to the outside <gasps> turn, like trying to be turned and he realized I'd be shitting my pants I'd be shitting my realizing like this is happening yeah right and uh, so waited you know was able to see a figure come through the window uh, this is the part of the story where it gets not murky, but um, it, gets, it gets buck wild because yeah, there's like, like a gunfight. Yeah, a, a straight up gun. Yeah, like he, you know, stop, police, halt, like fires, and person who had actually stolen the gun from that house, uh, the assailant, returns fire with oh, and the husband and wife who live there are home. Oh uh, my god, and, uh, no! So the officer like Jeez. retreats into the bedroom. Oh, uh, this is also at a time where most police departments only had revolvers, not nine millimeters. Oh, my god. So I remember that was one of the things my dad used to complain about in the nineties was the police weren't transitioning to clips. Right, you got six shots. Yeah, before six you got shots. To reload. And so he like was retreating into the bedroom, basically telling them like. He's out there. Like, and he's got... Like, he's, stay he's here. Armed. And uh, they said, like, they, the in the house, the, the couple and the police officer talk about how he was trying to bust his way out of the door of the Jesus house. And that Christ. they could feel, like, the house shaking. shaking. Like, that gives you an idea how big this guy was. Right. And, like, like the adrenaline, yep. too. So, like, <laughs> you're a teenager, yep. you're freaking out, yep. somebody's shooting at you, like... So the officer eventually goes out there is that gun battle exchange. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, by, when he comes back from the bedroom, does see he was able to bust his way through some of the glass in the ex, uh, kitchen door, and he escapes. But there's quite a lot of blood. Uh, they didn't know why exactly. Um, they didn't know, you know, maybe just a hand going through the window or a gun battle. Right. Um, and they so they start calling emergency rooms, just saying, hey, you might have somebody coming in with lots of blood loss. Um, also in a time before Lehigh Valley Health Network exists. Hey. So you have, like, Muhlenberg Hospital is its own thing. Cedar Crest Hospital is its own thing. Sacred Heart and Al. And so, like, it isn't just this. And, um, and like, you don't get my chart either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So they just have to <laughs> literally call <laughs> random hospitals like, hey, you might have a patient with blood loss. And a couple mm-hmm. hours later, the next morning, uh, Cedar Crest Boulevard, Cedar Crest Hospital gets a... Uh, All the way to Cedar Crest. Yeah. A dip, wow. I, I mean, yeah, Cedar Crest got the Cedar Crest Hospital. Wow. And they notice somebody, you know, good amount of blood loss um they actually called the officer from the house to like come up and just be like hey is this the guy is this the guy and he must have known because shortly before anyway he goes to leave and then they don't really have a choice in security kind of and that's where he's apprehended um and it's at a time with early dna They were able to start finding his hairs on victims and his, like, they were able to go to trial that way. Yeah, I was Um, reading, I went to Murderpedia and it said that they got him on DNA. Yeah. Um, In the time, like, pre-OJ, but in that time of, like, 
is this is this real science? Yeah. And um, but I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I know. Because I, I, um, I want to say stuff. But like, what do you I know? know? I want to know. What is yeah, it? I just I, nothing. No. Keep going. I want to know. No, 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 no. I'm super it's just interested. Funny I that, know. that when he said that, you looked right yeah. at me. Of course, I looked at you. You're the group you're scientist. It's what you're here for. I know, but it's just like I, there's still people that think that way. It's so frustrating. People, yeah, yeah, people still but don't buy the DNA thing. They don't buy science in general. Pop? Well, oh yeah, like in true. general, like flat, like, flat flat earth, the like fucking even vaccines like even, yeah, and vaccines. Fucking... Everything hospital related lately. I just feel like people are just Every, like no, yeah. no vaccinations. That's why we have fucking measles and all this shit coming back because people. Well, kids. the best frame yeah. of reference I can give you for what we knew about DNA, um, we had talking colorful DNA in Jurassic Park. That <laughs> may yeah, have that been was. the, like, <laughs> that was about the most that, like, yeah, I knew I about that. it. In middle of, like, it was like, I know there's this thing, and I know we can make dinosaurs. Um, That's fucking... And it's bright and pink. Yeah, it talks to you, kind of like the paperclip in Microsoft off it. Like, <laughs> God damn. But, um... And this yeah. is all before I was even born, so I'm just like, I didn't even know anything about this stuff. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, damn. So... It's wild. Yeah, I mean, there was a collective relief, I think, when... Like, oh, sure, when he was finally freaked, caught, because yeah. people could open the doors again. And, yeah, and but how long did that take for people to actually get comfortable again? Yeah, don't have to sweat yeah. my ass all the oh, yeah. way anymore. This is, this is about two months, yeah. I mean, I don't know how quickly people became comfortable. I, I think it, it was shocking, the, the age, first of all. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we... Yeah. Um, now, one of the things that was leading it to, which is interesting because we were talking about this beforehand, um, everybody expected it to be like a psychopath because that's kind of to understand and the Allentown State Hospital was still fully functional on yeah. Hanover Avenue at this time so everyone kind of expected it to be like the escaped mental patient oh, and Jesus. and where it was like a semi-normal person I yeah uh, I I always do this thing where I look up their photo if I yeah. got to read about somebody mm -hmm. I'll look up their photo and I, I looked up this guy's photo yep. too uh Harvey, Harvey. Neal, yeah. yeah they called him Miggy <laughs> ah, that's that's a terrible nickname. Yeah. <laughs> terrible nickname for a terrible a person. Terrible, yeah. person. Yeah. True. terrible person, true. Um, but he, uh, yeah, he just he looked super normal. He looked like the guy sitting next to you in class. He looked like so. Was cousin. there any kind of reasoning behind him? Uh, did he have any internal reasoning for himself to do God. these awful acts? I, I mean, like, it, you get the whole story where, like, oh, yeah, he had... Um, bad childhood. I was going to say, childhood. Yeah, bad childhood. childhood. Psychological history and, of familial abuse. Yeah, like, plenty of people get abused. And, it's not right, but, like, they don't all turn into fucking exactly. serial killers. Brother exactly. and father, I think, were in a prison system. Yeah, his father uh, His father left his mother, who he used... Or, no, no, no. His, his father used to beat his mother, yeah. and his mother left... Yeah. Um, and then his father uh, beat his new girlfriend to death mm -hmm. and oh, went to yes. jail. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what. Who happened. was raising him? Uh, probably, probably his mom. I think it was mom at the time of the um, killings when he was arrested. Which, yeah, like you do your best, I guess, but sometimes. Yeah, I mean, he was a, he was a dear of high school student. Uh, you know, teachers didn't have that like troubled student stories to yeah. tell. Right. Uh, at some point, he was active in sports, mm -hmm. and uh, I know they said he was actually a decent writer. Oh. That um, I, I just saw recently, they talked about how, like, yeah, like teachers thought he had a chance, but where like he had won something with an essay that he had wrote, and I well, had a high IQ. Um, I feel like that's a meme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, so he had I, like uh, behavioral problems though. Like he yes. had violent outbursts. Yes. And oh yeah, I, believe, I think I did see. Yeah, he was in and out of like arrest and juvie and whatnot from the age of nine. nine. But it was mostly non-violent stuff. Mm. It was a lot of thefts, a lot of vandalism, things like that. Yeah, like breaking in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Burglary. So it was yeah. It was like a history of break-ins that well, I was maybe that's where, to yeah. a history. I was just gonna say that, it's like because like, yep. like you were saying, how his uh, his theme was you break in first and then come back. Come back. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so he was eventually found guilty. Uh, we talked about he, on record, as one of the younger serial kiss killers in our country's history. Uh, at the time, was sentenced to death for the murders. Uh, uh, he, he was given three counts of uh, yes, sentence to death. Yes, three yeah. death sentences <laughs> by lethal injection. Damn. And then I know what first... Uh, 
came into play around 2006 uh, when they started realizing lethal injection might not totally be painless. Mm -hmm. I know he was one of the people at the forefront that was trying to get a new sentence because he was coming back on this, like, it's not painless. Yeah, because And then... So um, yeah. Man, you. So? Yeah, but the amount of pain you, you caused someone. Yeah. Like, exactly. strangled you strangled people. Yeah. You oh, yeah. Okay. People. We didn't even get yeah. into the. Yeah, the, the. For the most part, the weapons were just sharp instruments, yeah, just fists, like whatever. strangulation. Yeah, it all just like brutal, yeah, horrible. Just horrible, horrible, horrible. And, um. Yeah, so, so he fought uh, a resentencing with his uh, lethal injection. And then I think eventually, I, I want to say it was going to get commuted. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it is. I still think he is. On, yeah, he's still on death row. He's still on death row. He's still, still, still on death row? Yes, yeah, trying, to, trying to yeah, fight Yeah, he's it. trying to yeah. Yep, still trying Why to does it take so long? Like, I know it takes a long time. A lot of people but... die on death row because it takes so freaking long. Yeah. Uh, I know one of the, he's got three, but I know one of the... Uh, accounts that he's trying to like fight was the fact that the I, I know it was the Callie uh, it mm. was the one that she didn't remember being sexually assaulted until later and that are trying to find that as a reason to throw it all out oh fuck over. no yeah it fuck doesn't no. matter you still That's, kill people there are, exactly. there are multiple other people what who you fuck? have directly victimized yeah. so uh, like but we're splitting fucking hairs here yeah. no that's so fuck, no. that's bullshit yeah. i don't know if i remembered all of that as well until i was older and uh was watching it and then calling my dad and just being like do you remember all this and then being like yeah and I'm like, did you keep a lot of this from me? And he's like, yeah. yeah. And, and, and just that moment of like, I didn't want you totally paranoid like every yeah. single night. Like you but, gotta leave the house. But like time. knowing like two or three blocks, you know, several blocks away and everybody had a story. At that. My dad said the amount of times they were fielding phone calls from like, I think my back window was opened half an inch. Mm. Nobody has any idea. Yeah. Right. So the none of them are scared. Ever, They're calling yeah. in. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. Right. So like none of none of yes. that stuff was ever linked or anything like yeah. that. But yeah, you just how could you like? Yeah, you just imagine like the fears of like yeah. So we were a few blocks away. I can't imagine what it was like on the block. For, yeah, for yeah. the people the in East Allentown. Town. Yeah, because everything, all those attacks, all those murders, everything occurred from basically the blockbuster to Deer of High School. That's crazy. So you we pass that. that way all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 out there, man. Yeah, so. <laughs> Obviously, that blockbuster is not there anymore. But no, yeah. I know. Rest it's, in peace, blockbuster. So sad. I used to love going to blockbuster. With that my was always a great time. Like, like, rent a movie for the over. weekend. Yeah, you could watch it two or three times. Get mm -hmm. popcorn. Yep. My sister threw up outside of blockbuster once. That's a story you yeah. tell. That's that's story. Story. <laughs> that was the downfall of the it company. It was it. My <laughs> the whole thing. It was my sister. I I've seen online <laughs> multiple ways that people have tried to like think about how could you like redo Blockbuster without having to redo Blockbuster. Mm -hmm. It was like, can we just have a place with like pictures that we can just go before we stream something and, like, <laughs> and then drive home? And I was like, you guys really don't know. Like that Friday night, what that yeah. is like, grab the candy and the popcorn and the drink, see friends. Like, Yeah, you get to have it as like a teenager too. Or oh, yeah. super upset when you show up in the movie that you've been waiting for was oh, all sold out. Yeah, and it's you're all like, sold no, out. And you go to the front why? counter. Did anyone return this anyone? yet? Can you yeah. tell me when the copies do back? <laughs> yep. And then just... there's like a sad teenager yep. at the counter who's like, yeah, Anytime you would hear the clunk of the outside drop box. What's in there? Which we'll just got dropped out. What, what did they can you, can you, Transmorphers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, for any of those listeners uh, who are from Lehigh Valley, I know there's quite a few of you, uh, do you remember this time? Do you have any stories to share? Do you remember what it was like? Um, there's a lot of you out there, so please write in, share your experiences. Um, but we're going to take a quick break, and I'm going to make sure the doors are locked here at the studio, and we'll be right back. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by The Colony Meadery. If you haven't tried meat yet, it's alcohol made for money, it's all natural, totally gluten-free, and delicious. Colony Meadery is one of the best meaderies in the world, and it's located in Pennsylvania's Lehigh Valley. Stop in and try a flight of meads, grab some bottles or cans to go, and experience some of the best booze in the world. They have flavors ranging from tart and quaffable lemon laws and Wu-Tang Crayon, to sweet cinnamon and vanilla series of tubes, and even sweet heat with their mango habanero. Learn more at ColonyMeadery.com. Ghost Encounters is sponsored by Phoenix Fire Media. Elevate your business with their digital marketing strategies, including their multi-award winning social media marketing, photography, and video production. 
Phoenix Fire Media, igniting success through creative excellence. Visit phoenixfiremedia.com. If you're enjoying the Ghost Encounters podcast, hit subscribe and give us five stars. To watch full episodes of the Ghost Encounters show, visit ghost-encounters.com. And don't forget, when you're on our website, click on The Spooky Shop for all your Ghost Encounters spooky swag. To stay up to date with Ghost Encounters, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Ghost Encounters PA. To send spooky fan stories, email ghostencounterstories at gmail.com or message us on social. Do you want ad-free episodes of Ghost Encounters Podcast, plus bonus episodes, extra content, and much more? Then you should head to Patreon and be a spooky VIP. Go to patreon.com forward slash Ghost Encounters Podcast and be haunted from all the benefits with the spooky VIP membership. And we are back. I did make sure all the windows were closed, the doors are locked. Let's get into the next one. We're going to jump forward a couple of years to February 26th, 1995, right here in the Lehigh Valley. Uh, this is the Freeman family murders. This was brutal. Yeah. The, um, this one hit quickly. Um, part because it has so many elements that you, you don't like. Yeah. Um, like I said, when, when you talk about this one, and, and we'll get into what all those elements are. Um, but yeah, this happened, you know, no, no, no pun intended, the dead of winter. And uh, it happened in Salisbury Township, which for those of you okay. familiar with the Lehigh Valley, um, it's not one of the bigger areas. You have Allentown, Bethlehem, and Easton. And then a lot of the other places people usually just say, oh, it's between there and there. It's like right. almost, it's like kind of almost Emmaus, yes. kind of almost Allentown. Yeah, just yep. kind of tucked in there. And um, so this is a st- story, as I've gotten older, has never left me. And part of it we'll, we'll get into as well is the, the reasoning. Now, with the, the previous one we were talking about, there was the fear of about two months of not knowing. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, the fear was they knew right away. Um, and it wasn't done. Um, so you, you want to get into it? or Yeah, sure. Let's, I'm just going to give the and listeners... I'll my memories. Yeah, I'm going to give the listeners some background information. And then I kind of have like a uh, chronological outline of like, the murders, the aftermath, how they were caught, the court case. But a little background, Brian and David Freeman murdered their parents, Brenda and Dennis, and their younger brother, Eric, at their family home with the help of their cousin, Ben Birdwell, Jesus like you Christ. said, in Salisbury Township. Mm-hmm. Uh, for several years, Brian and David had been embracing neo-Nazi culture, which escalated in the months leading up to the killings, including tattooing Nazi slogans on their foreheads. Oh. Uh, yeah, Brian had the word berserker, berserker tattooed across his forehead, and David had Sieg Heil yeah. tattooed Ooh, above his eyebrows. No, mm-hmm. no. The, like, I don't know if they looked like in their younger years, but the photos that I saw, like, they were dudes you did not want to nope. come across. Um, the younger brother, uh, now I'm like, no, my name, which is David, uh, as a sophomore, when this happened, uh, is 6'4", 250 pounds. Jesus He's a big boy. Cr- um, B- biggest boy. And his brother is decently big, like 6'2", 220, I think I saw. Oh. But the baby brother is just a man child. Ooh. Yeah. Um, lower IQ, impressionable, substance abuse. Uh, you just, you have a Hulk. Uh, fried, a, fried brain. Fried brain. Yeah. Now, their growing up life was different. They were brought up in a religious family as mm-hmm. Jehovah Witnesses, um, but both brothers completely resented their family lifestyle and took it to another level by embracing mm-hmm. neo-Nazi culture. Big yikes. Mm-hmm. And to jump it, we, we talked before about the big bad in, in the country. Mm. At, at that time... I, I don't want to say neo-Nazism or, or skinheads. Sometimes they were just called skinheads or whatever. Yeah, they, they referenced that too. Uh, it was like American History Act. Yeah, it was, it was, I don't want to say it was prevalent because it sounds like it was everywhere, mm-hmm. but it was there. It was a known thing. It was a known thing, and I don't think it was as quickly called out a, as it is today. A lot of times people brushed it off as they're idiots, like they're just, we just don't want to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And I don't think people took it on head on. Like uh, occasionally there would be like flyers would show up in mailboxes in a ne- neighborhood in Bethlehem Ew. about how like, Ooh, there's oh, going to be a white so supremacist gross. rally somewhere. And most people were just like, oh, this sucks. And like, 
that was it. Like, they didn't people, take it too seriously. People didn't think, like, we need to root this out. Yeah, and I think did. that's how, like, you could have somebody walking around school with, like, the, the SS symbol oh. from, like, the, on, a, like, a jean jacket. No. And wouldn't have the entire school, like... You know, it would like people yep. wouldn't make them take it off. Yeah, you know? and not that it was endorsed at all. I just don't think people took it, um, realized we had to take it as seriously mm-hmm. as, as we should. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, for a while, these brothers, um, Brian had been admitted to a mental hospital for mental illness. Mm-hmm. Um, David was placed in several juvenile facilities yeah. for uh, treatment. There's so, yep substance abuse. Um, yeah, they were already not good kids. But Jordan, you were just telling me. Your grandmother was a teacher, I know this, that she had both or one of them in class? My grandmother taught Brian in ninth grade at middle school. She said he was a good student, um, but she said that he changed a lot after she was like in school teaching with him. Um, she did say that David was in rehab and missed several years of school. She also asked me why the hell am I asking? <laughs> <laughs> um, Fair question. But she said it's a very sad story, and she basically just said that their school district went absolutely batshit at that point. And, like, they were all on edge because they didn't know because they were in school with them. Like, mm-hmm. even the younger brother that got murdered. So right. they were like, Ooh. what What could they come after anybody that works here? Could right. they come yeah. after any of the other students? So, yeah, it was, like, a big big deal. It was a known... It, it, now, it, Bethlehem is far enough away from, like, Salisbury that obviously mm-hmm. people don't run in the same circles. But um, from what we know now, they were known in Salisbury High School. Uh, when the, the two brothers... Where students were afraid of them, people oh, sure. uh, like. I mean, first of all, their sheer size. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do know there was a story of how I think the younger brother tried to play football and got into an altercation, a physical Ooh. with a co. Like adults were worried about them. The father was a janitor at the school, and it seems like it was just a a, a path to eventually what happens in February. Um, some of the things the parents tried, I know they tried things through their church, which only made things worse. worse. Uh, they tried. Uh, they thought about doing some different, like tough love type of rehab facility, and nothing. Um, what started sparking it, and what will get us to here is um, so when the oh the boys, I think, had bullied their younger brother one day, and the mom was really upset that they. I, I think I forget they exactly what had happened that day, uh, and they had bought a car with their own money. The brothers had. Uh, that they were fixing up. Mm-hmm. It was like something that they used to do a lot of times outside. They would fix up this car so they didn't have to be inside. Mm-hmm. And I think the day that they had hit or beat up their brother, uh, the mom's reaction was to sell the car as quickly as she possibly could. And by the time they came home, uh, the car was gone, which made them livid. I believe that's what led to the tattoos. Yeah, there is. Yep. <sighs> um, so then I think when the tattoos happened, the parents realized you know, something's going to completely is going to need to be done control. really, really, really quickly. Um, one of those stories, and now as an adult, uh, when I was researching and rehashing all this, the wife and I talked about uh, the father Dennis used to sleep with a baseball bat next to his bed for wow, fear that he was going to be killed by his children. Yeah. I mean, that the police were at their house yeah. about a total of five times between 1993 and 1995, and the brothers even threatened to kill their parents. Yeah. Like when, like yeah, when, like when they sold the doing? car, yeah. they, like, we're gonna fucking kill you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the younger brother used to talk about being killed by his brothers. He told his aunt about, you know, who was gonna watch. I believe it was his dog if he was killed by his oh brother. My God. So, I don't know, and that's why, like I said, why it affects me now as a parent is I don't know how you exist in yeah. that world, like, I, like when you fear your own child to that extent, yeah. like in. I, I don't know. I don't have an answer. Um, but that is what kept the chain of events going and getting closer and closer and closer. Um, their cousin, uh, the, I'm, sorry, I'm going to probably say the name incorrectly, the last name. I know it's Birdwell. I might say uh, Birdo is what I wanted to say, who is a totally different podcast. <laughs> um, but they call them Benny. And I know he was part of the reason they got into neo Nazism. And the mom kind of resented him and didn't want him around the mm-hmm. boys and I believe what happened was they were going to go to a movie one night I know the parents thought the best thing to do was purge their room of every all the paraphernalia and I believe they came home that night to like all their stuff gone and then Benny the cousin wasn't allowed in the house came in the house the mom said get out I guess he continued to come through mm-hmm. uh, like a side window and the mom continuously was kicking him out 
What happens from there is still disputed how it starts. The aftermath is is not disputed. Um, from what, you know, for the most part, what we understand is the altercation, uh, the, the murders begin in the basement uh, with the mom. And um, they kind of are able, they, they believe it was Brian, the older brother, um, and maybe his cousin were there. But it seems like there's just a verbal altercation like we know has happened mm-hmm. in the past and just gets to a point where it's not. It escalates, it escalates. Um, and so I believe he hits the mom in the head with a pipe um, and she doesn't, I, I might be all wrong with something, but anyway, strikes the mom, she doesn't go unconscious, doesn't, and then what ultimately does is he stabs her in the shoulder area with a uh, blade that goes about five inches in. Oh my um, God. Which is going to cause the bleeding. And I believe collapses at this point, gets hit several more times, and it just seems like in that moment, the, whoever the assailant is, um, realizes now we've crossed the Rubicon and we need, let's just keep going. Yeah. And that's when they go back upstairs and it seems like if it was one in the basement or two in the basement, it seems like all three kind of get on this same page. Um, and then it seems like they turn their attention to the father who's asleep in the room. No. Um, and that, I believe, is just a blunt instrument. Uh, yeah, uh, they kind of beat him to death with a exercise bar that's and right, an yeah. aluminum bat. And a, that's where an aluminum bat, because that, that bat they got from the closet. It was a family bat. Yeah, I was going to say, that's probably... Um, and there's bad. just horrifically gory details in that but um, extremely yeah i mean we don't need to go um but and then how um they're young and I, it, it's so tough the youngest brother uh eric is asleep in his room and then he's also bludgeoned in the same way um Damn. and so this this the scene has happened uh the boys steal the parents car well i guess take steal it everywhere at this point it doesn't matter um the car and flee uh, no. And this was what brings us to the morning of February 26th. Yeah, it's a 1988 Pontiac convertible. So how it unfolds, and this goes back to the still that insanity of it, is um, the aunt, uh, the mom's sister, also was very fearful of the boys. Was she the mother of the cousin? No, who, different, no okay. different one. And um, she gets a phone call from um, the mom's work that she didn't come to work. Oh. And immediately... She knew. Probably knows. Yeah. Uh, and heads to the house, and I believe he either called the police before she got... Anyway, is kind of already aware this is probably what's happening. Um, the morning news, it's out quickly as this triple homicide with two <clears throat> with two other family members missing, and are they... Are they, are they dead? Not realizing most people knew already, yeah. but it sort of comes out as like, oh, it's just this whole tra- like family tragedy, and it's like, oh, no, it's, you know... Very, very, very quickly, the aunt um, and everything is able to, to piece together. This is probably what yeah. happened. Um, so almost the same day, um, you know, news hits. And that news hits fast. Yeah. Um, so it was everywhere. It does become national news, which at that time is very rare. I mean, CNN's about your only 24-hour news network. Mm-hmm. Uh, network yeah. news was going to pick up on it. But, um, I mean, we knew. Yeah, and, I guess I guess that is kind of prior to the 24-hour news cycle yeah. as we know it today. Yeah, I mean their pictures are front page, and when you see you know two skinheads with you know the tattoo, yeah. you're just like, like it's, um, where are they? And now one of the things at this time uh, that I, I was so at this point I'm a sophomore at Liberty High School, and. Um, at that time, they always had newspapers available in schools. They still somewhat do, but I was one of those newspaper kids. <laughs> Every morning, like after homeroom, I would swing by the main office and I grab both newspapers. I used Aww. to like to do the cross, but I was I was a newspaper kid, and I used to like. And but that, that day, everyone's just like, "Do you see this? Like this? this <laughs> Look is, at these fucking dudes. This is insane." Yeah. <laughs> um, we had the I should almost say luxury because you guys didn't have this uh, when you, in your schooling. Columbine was about three years away, mm. so the thought of a school attack was about as far from my mind. Um, it was just incomprehensible. Yeah. Uh, you guys didn't grow up with that luxury um, that we did. You always had lockdown drills mm-hmm. and things like that. When I was teaching, those were all part of my reality. But as a student, nope. It was never, never the thought of that. And I often was thinking about that going back into some of these. 
today would these crimes have turned into school shootings? Like you wonder, like would it have like started as a school? Yeah, shooting? like had, had the brothers really... thought about this, like you know, could it have just been a, Sal- yeah. a Salisbury High attack instead of the families? Yeah. Could, Which is terrifying. Yeah, um, to think about. Yeah. And so at Liberty, we knew they were missing. We knew they were wanted. We just nobody quite knew where they were. Um, or like what you would even do about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I, I know I, I called my dad and he's like, other than just kind of being on alert, like we didn't know to like watch schools, watch this. What like Bethlehem has like 20 some elementary schools to begin <laughs> yeah. with. Um, so yeah, it was just this sort of like, oh yeah, we're looking for them. And then um, they pop up in a, I wouldn't say an unusual place, but um, they they flee westward. Uh, I think they do get Michigan. To, yeah. They went to the home of a fellow Nazi friend of theirs named oh, Frank Jesus. Hess, um, yeah. and they were eventually captured and arrested at his home three days later. Yeah, wow. Michigan. But for three whole days, people Just in the Lehigh Valley had no idea where these neo-Nazi psychopaths were. Yep. And, and I, I feel like they are just so recognizable, like physically recognizable, that if you saw them, you would know right, immediately. Yeah, would, you'd think. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> just about anywhere. But well, it, if it made national news, maybe that's how they yeah, that's you know, true. realized. That's true. Yeah, I think they were spotted at a convenience store somewhere, and like in Western PA, and I think they were able to, yeah, I know the, where they were found was an acquaintance of the cousin. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're eventually arrested. Yeah. They do not fight extradition. Uh, they come back to PA, and there's a little period of time goes on where eventually deals are made. People have turned on each other. Mm-hmm. Um, not so much the brothers. The brothers and the cousins uh, are at yeah. odds at this point because the cousin, I think the the brothers tried to pin everything on the cousin. The cousin tried to pin everything on the brothers. Um, deals were made where certain mm-hmm. brothers did kind of come forward and say, you know, okay, I did this one, but I didn't do all three. Uh, as part of the I don't want to be put to death Bruh. deals. Um, and then it was like testifying against other ones. And so what the actual truth is, I don't know. If We, we don't know. If we know. Wow. But the coroner at the time described the killings as one of the most brutal acts of murder they have ever seen. Mm-hmm. Um, we had County District Attorney Bob uh, Steinberg also described the murders as brutal uh, claiming that the faces of both Dennis and Eric had been beaten and bludgeoned so badly that they weren't even recognizable. Oh, my God. Which is so sad. Uh, yeah, it's, like, um, it's sick. Apparently, Brian pleaded guilty to uh, Brenda's murder, while David pleaded guilty to the murder of Dennis. Mm-hmm. Birdwell was tried for all three murders and was convicted of the murder of the parents. No one was convicted of the murder of poor little Eric. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. sorry, Eric. You deserve better. And, yeah, like, when, when we started this talking about it, it's like, yeah, he should be, he's a few years old. Yeah. Like, he should be 41, 42 years old, just, yeah. Hanging you know, out. living a life. Yeah. It knew, knew it was coming, and it, so it's, it shocked the Lehigh Valley, I think, more than any of the three cases we talk about, just because of the sheer horrendousness of it. Mm-hmm. And that's what we, when we started it, saying, like, you have skinheads, you have you know, killing of parents. You have yeah. a brutal killing. You you know, killing your own brother at 11 years old. You have high school students yeah. uh, there. You, and it, it just had so many pieces to it that just made it absolutely horrendous. Yeah. And, and just, like, unimaginable. Yeah, like, you, you, you don't realize how affected you are by it until... You start going back, yeah, and, and, and you, yeah. think, you think about it, yep. and you kind of pull the pieces apart, and you're just like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, seriously. There's, there's the no fuck? better way to put it. <laughs> yep. Now, one of the things we didn't talk about, I'm just going to interject with with this for a second too, because it, it, the the two are so connected, but the second one just gets overlooked so much because of the timing. Um, I believe it's four days after the killings. Uh, in Emmaus, right down the road, uh, there's a maybe some sophomore uh, at Emmaus High School is watching all the news. Um, by all accounts, is a normal kid. He's on the swim team, decent student. His brother goes to Penn State, and the pressure of being a good kid gets to him. 
he sees this news and uh, goes and gets the 22 rifle and waits for both Ooh. parents to come home and shot and killed both of them. Oh uh, this is four Jeez. days after yeah. the Freemans. Um, like a copycat. And, st- and wrote in his letter and everything, like, the Freemans are cool. They did it. Like, I told you I was gonna. Um, and uh, I'm gonna blame on his... I know it's Jeff. It's, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, it, but um, he... Now... That I just remember. I do not remember it being so close, like four days apart. Um, he does go to trial for both murders. He is found not guilty by reason of insanity. And he has been committed, uh, I believe he's down in Montgomery County, and uh, has not been released at any point yet. So wow. he's been deemed uh, incompetent for the Dude. past 30 years. But, um, yeah. So, like, when we think wow. of all this coming at you rapid fire, it's like we almost didn't process that one in most yeah. people's memory and because of the guys, three minutes. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, but they actually come up in recent news mm-hmm. uh, in February 2024, so the 29th yep. anniversary of these murders, um, they did a retrial. Mm-hmm. So they got life sentences, but there was a Supreme Court ruling in 2012 that anyone under the age of 18 cannot get a life sentence. Without Uh-oh. parole. Without, 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 yeah, parole. without a chance of parole. Oh. Correct. Yeah. So the cousin, he was eight, he just he turned eight, he turned 18 um, just two weeks yeah. before the murder. So wow. he can't, he's yeah. not up for a retrial. He's, uh-huh. yeah, he's still but done. The, 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 the brothers, brothers uh, apparently are, in their... In their words, apparently they're very uh, upset and sorry for what they did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Hannah's sure. face right now. <laughs> I know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you beat your family to death mm-hmm. to yeah. the point where they were not recognizable. Mm-hmm. And I feel like... Who's to say when you're out there you're not going to get that kind of rage back and just start fucking lashing right. out? Yeah. Yeah. Who's to say you're just not like, Whether you're sorry or not, yeah. like you're you're kind of a, no, kind of a fucking yeah. hazard. Yeah, you, to don't, you don't get the Seriously. chance to yeah. live with us ever yeah. again. Yeah. Uh, it was, uh, Brian said, everyone deserves to live a safe, happy life, free of violence, and pain. What about your brother, though? And I took that away from my family and my community. Mm-hmm. I would give anything to uh, have my family back and take away all the trauma. And apparently, David's attorney argued that David was acting under his brother's orders. Yes. That's yep. like some making a murder shit. Yep. Yeah. It? Yeah. Like, I know they tried originally with him too. They wanted him to go into the juvenile system because I think he was only 15 at the time. I might be off uh, on the age. I That's think. So young. Um, I think he was 16. 16, pot. I know the whole thing yeah, even uh, there was could he even be tried as an adult? Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and that's right. I know eventually there was that angle of the one brother just went along with it because he was afraid that the other two, like they had already killed one brother. Why wouldn't they kill him? And it's. It's. Like it doesn't, it's hard it doesn't to it's hard to together. pull that story when you have a tattoo across your forehead that mm-hmm. you know says otherwise. Yay. But uh yeah. So that yeah, that's was, a crazy oh. That was a fun month, of, few months of, of horror. horror. Yeah. Yeah, that's, but that's it, a bad part There's still more. It doesn't end. No, it doesn't no. end. Yeah. So Jordan, you uh looked up the lookout murders. Yes I did. Um two young seriously young girls were murdered at the lookout which is like for us a very like scenic place to Mm -hmm. like go up and chill like I've only ever been there a couple times but it was a common place that people like to go look and see all the lights and everything I have never been um, it's it's actually quite lovely it is it's nice it's It's up on the mountain is it yeah yeah they have like a little spot yeah. Like, okay. You just pull your oh, car you know, there's car a car over and hang out. There's a photo in this book. It's like, okay, I'm from Reading, um, so I, I'm equating it to the pagoda. I don't know if anybody's seen the pagoda in Reading, but we have a we have a pagoda for some reason. Uh, and you're actually fun fact, you're not allowed to go up there anymore because somebody got murked up at the pagoda. See? <laughs> so, just shot so try to putting it in in perspective. I was trying to do this for Hannah. Like I, I said, I'm like, do hang out? Like do do spots? Still exists yeah. for today's, and I'm view. like, oh yeah, like a makeout spot. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Yeah, and the, the reasoning behind it is, you, like, you got to remember this. Now, this crime occurs in 1995, but we are still before cell phones. Right. Uh, we had pagers. We were cool. Yeah. Um, we had pagers, <laughs> but the reason why, like, spots, you know, quote unquote, existed, was because you couldn't find your friends on a moment's notice. Yeah. So you had five or six locales that. You just went to like the and one for example is the Burger King on 191. That was a great <laughs> melding spot of like Liberty Freedom Becca. You would swing by, you know, the Home Depot uh, didn't exist yet, and you would swing by Burger King. You would see who was in the lot. You'd see who was inside. Nah, cool, we're good. All right, let's go to the next spot. And you know, it was 
that like that was your existence when you got a driver's license because you couldn't what call somebody to be alive, man. Yeah, yeah, on yeah. a cell phone. Your yeah. house was the spot. I know. We used to meet at my house or we used to go down towards your house for manhunt, quote unquote manhunt. Yeah. We never fucking played manhunt. We just went and hung out. Yeah, just went Literally hung out. just yeah. sat on the street like idiots. Made each other laugh. Just yeah, out, just hung yeah. out. Yeah, but that's what, but these, it was fun. that's what these spots were. Uh, I know one like one of ours was if you drove around to the back of Alex Mill where the uh, waterfalls are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People used to hang back yeah. there. People would, um, obviously, the lookout was a spa. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it was just a thing. So when, when this happens, you, you want to go ahead or I'll give you memories right away? You go ahead, go ahead. So uh, June 30th, is that the right, I got the right date? June... I just have June 1995. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's it's the end. I know we were out of school. We were out okay. of school only a few days. Um, but there's a double shooting. Uh, about 9.30 at night. Uh, people hear gunshots call police. And I think by like, it was only a few minutes later, um, they discover um, there's a car there. One victim in the car. Another victim over on the lawn, closer to the wall. They think um, at this point that both of them were probably on the wall mm. and um, one of them was trying to get back to the car uh, and, then, and then wasn't able to. Um, so it was Mary Orlando and Jennifer Grider and uh, they were 15 and 17, best of friends from the time they were little, uh, students at Freedom High School and Bethlehem Catholic High School. Um, they had gone to, if I remember correctly, uh, the hamburger stand, which doesn't exist anymore, but a burger spot is how history yeah. remembers it, because uh, their their bags and their food and everything uh, were, were still at the crime scene. Back in the day of um, burger spots. Yeah, the day of the burger spots. Now, yeah, yeah. yeah, now you just have fast food. Uh, yep. but, uh, fast uh, food or a $25 burger. Yeah. yeah. Um, Seriously, Jesus it's so expensive for fast food. Yep. Ruins my life. Yep. Yeah. No. McDonald's thinks we actually like the food. Anyway. <laughs> Rather than just like fucking subsisting. Only the chicken nuggets. I like the chicken nuggets. I'll go for some chicken nuggets. Oh, so, no. but, Fly your freaky flag. Yep. So freaky next flag. morning, you know, double homicide, gunshot wounds um, is, is what the, you know, and it hits pretty quickly um, because, you know, this is just north, like just off the campus of Lehigh University. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that immediately draws headlines. Um, and here's where some of the rumors, demographics, whatever of Bethlehem at the time come into play. Um, so yeah, both, uh, yeah, female victims, um, and, uh, both are, uh, white and typically at the time, a lot of crime in Bethlehem was always seen as a crime of crimes of color. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so the idea of, you know, two well, like white girls being killed was like kind of raise the, um, Communities, communities awareness. Um, how also it plays is that they went to Bethlehem Catholic and Freedom, which were looked at at that time as the best or the good schools in Bethlehem. Uh, and Liberty, where I went, we were we were the bad school. We still are. Yeah. It's, oh yeah. No, we still no. It's still very still, much the we same. We still have that rep. I mean, which I always find amazing because Jordan and uh, Justin were both students of mine and are wonderful people. Um, <laughs> and the fact yeah. that like it's because we had wonderful teachers well, like you. Seriously. Well, thank, thank you much. Yeah. But uh, I mean, it, it's the same story for generation upon generation. And in, in a way, we like to wear that as a badge. It's yeah. like, oh yeah, Liberty's as bad as you heard. Yeah. Yeah. It's yes. like, I remember the one time we were in the auditorium and they did like, I don't remember if it was like the first day of school or the last day of school. I don't remember. But they were literally telling us about all the arrests and everything that happened like on yes. campus the previous year. And instead of everybody feeling like shit that we're terrible, we fucking cheered. <laughs> it was embarrassing and we got in a lot of fucking trouble for it. So. But I remember that was my senior year. And I was like, fuck yeah, senior year. But no, we're just like, fuck yeah, we all get arrested. Like, <laughs> we did it. Yeah, it was like, not cool. It you kind of cool. had to have that mentality. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say to survive, but to kind of like get through some of the roughness you that did happen. You got to whistle mm-hmm. past the graveyard, man. Yeah. You got to do it. I, it was tough, like, but I, I feel like it made me a better person. No one, no one, to that. 100%. No one messed Seriously. with you or your sisters. Fuck no. Because I would have gone smack people in the old past for fun. Exactly. Because you didn't deal with people's crap. It, yeah. Get and the if fuck you out saw out someone bullying someone, you yeah, stopped that shit right that, there. Yeah. yeah. I, Absolutely. So, yeah, I, I mean, I think li- I love Liberty. I taught at Liberty, graduated from Liberty. I mean, I thank Liberty so much for everything about who I am as a person. Seriously. Uh, I love it. Yeah. And um, 
like in, in my life, like I, I am not a hard person at all, but I've been in situations where like instincts have kicked in and people are like freaking out and I, they're looking at me like, why are you not scared? And I was like, I went to Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> like this, like this it's so relatable. Like, like, how did I get this training on the job? But, um, like, oh, so yeah, I just dissociate wildly. Yeah. It's great. So when all that comes out, that's the first reaction. Um, the story that hits pretty quickly, besides the the sadness of the tragedy of the, the two girls, is um, and it permeates to this day. Separating the two is I, I don't think possible anymore because most people, if you ask me, our instinct is going to tell you exact. And the motive that came out almost instantly, uh, and this is not newspaper. This was like. The kids, like, this is my first summer driving, my first summer with a job, and we heard within a day, they owed drug money. Yeah, that's what I have um, written down, that they owed yep. him uh, money for cocaine. Yep, we heard Damn. drug money. Okay. Yep. But, the, but the family and the police were like, we have nothing to follow up on yep. that. Like, there's no reports that these kids ever did any drugs. Yep. Like, they, like, even, like, the family was like, we don't even fucking know who Christopher Bissy is. Yep. yep. The they person do, that like, shot them. I don't know. Did, do, do they, did they screen for that? Were they able to screen I for that? I don't know. They, they did not give any sort of that. information, but the police swear that there's no yep. way that these, like, good class So that was the word students. on the street from the start. Yeah. Wow. Like, I, I worked at Subway on Catasauqua Road, represent, oh. I was a sandwich artist, and I mean, within, you know, friends from Deerif. Oh, yeah, they, they owed so-and-so drugs. And it was like, friends from, like, everyone, they owed so-and-so drugs. Like, it was like, oh, yeah, they owed money for drugs. And I mean, how, who at 15 has the money to get cocaine? Well, well I think what also, parents? which you guys Coming can find... Coming out of, like, the 80s? I don't know. Find funny is everybody freaked out, though, more at the drug narrative... The, the crimes were bad, but the drug narrative really took off because of the image of liberty versus Becca and freedom. Okay. Wow. And everybody, it just became this, like, shock of, wait, people at Becca and freedom, like, would be into drugs? Like, that's a liberty thing. And, oh, no. And, no, one, no, of our, and one of our liberty jokes, I mean, I remember, like, I can go back to being 16, but we were always like, no, 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 like, we're, we're not as wealthy at liberty. We can only smoke pot and drink. <laughs> Seriously. Like, <laughs> like the <laughs> drugs are at the other schools. Y'all don't know. We're good, talking, like, Cole 45. good stuff's at the other schools. <laughs> yeah. And, like, that's what the shock of, like, parents of kids, like, I have friends that went to Becca, and they were like, I can't do it. would never be. And I'm like, no, y'all kids can afford it. Like, yeah. we, like, that's, what, that's the first thing that popped into my mind. It's like, really? These kids could afford cocaine? Not yeah. that I know how much cocaine is, but it probably was a little bit cheaper back, back, probably probably little fiance, cheaper so. back then compared to now. So that's like every down, fucking thing, honestly. But, but they always refer to like meth as the broke man's drug. So I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, well, cocaine's the bougie drug. Like, you know, all the, <laughs> right. the head of, like, you, t- you hear like, about like Charlie Sheen fucking doing cocaine and shit like that. Okay, clearly mm-hmm. he has money, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's where my mind went to. I'm like, these kids really out here on the streets just being like, yo, you got some cocaine. Like, I need that shit. How the fuck did you afford that, bitch? Mm -hmm. Like, that's crazy. crazy. So that, I mean... That's just like a fake narrative. There's no way. I just still, like, like, after seeing the family and hearing all of the reports, I just don't believe that that could have ever been their... Yeah. Their, their narrative right I, and I don't know, like because I mean that's what, what I started by saying was like any single person you ask like including my dad yeah. they would like oh yeah didn't they owe the guy money for drugs like that has my dad that, too like, has that become the rumor 100% of all hundred percent wow. wow. is the reason almost everybody will tell you that's um, so it made the crime though uh, yeah obviously the location the victims and then that narrative kind of coming out was I, I think sometimes we wanted that narrative to be real because it made you feel safer a lot of and to this day like a lot of crime and it sounds terrible but a lot of crime um in this day and age is targeted um you know i knew that growing up as you know a lot of times even still with like friends that are police officers if something really really bad happens they can usually tell you within like a couple hours or like there's no threat to the public Mm -hmm. and that's their way of saying like oh Yes, yeah, some, somebody did something. Somebody, somebody did something. This somebody was got either pissed drugs. Off. This was, uh, you know, this, that, and the other. And I think that it, it, it's so sad that that comforts us. Yeah. That we're like, oh well, it's not random, so it won't happen. It's to like, me. oh, yeah, I'm not. I was okay. just gonna say that the idea oh. of just having like the motive right away yeah. makes yeah. people settle more. Yep. Which is opposite of what the family thought. Like the family was yep. like, no, we yeah. still don't know the answers to why he did yep. this. But it's still crazy how this that. is just four months after. Yeah. The Freeman brothers. Yep. After the Freeman brothers. Which is so, not that long after the uh, uh, Harvey. Two years from yeah. Harvey. And that's why people, I do remember people saying, like, well, if this isn't that, like, is this, is this another, ra- like, are, do another we just have a, ra- random, random, do we have a random shooter? Yeah, yeah. Because we just had a serial killer two years ago. Yeah, like, same time. Yeah, like, you know? same time frame. Um, 
So the police are basically baffled. There's not, there's no clues. Uh, there's no real, you know, um, there, like there's no real physical evidence there. There's no weapon on the yeah. like there. So it really is just that we have to wait and see what shakes out. And they, they, they interview Freedom, they interview Bethlehem Cap, like they try circles of friends, they try all the, and one of the things that happens is he wasn't in their circle of yeah. friends necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, so about a month later, um, Chris Bissney's name gets given to the police anonymously, and I believe this one came out of a party, if I remember correctly. I believe somewhere there was a drug party, and... Um, he in a drug state blabbed and somebody like a day or so later was like, oh, this dude was bragging at a party. Um, bring him in, interview him. There's no connection between him and the crimes, no connection between him and the victims and he's set free. This yeah. is in July, about a month later. Um, nothing shakes out. Larry Holmes, former heavyweight champ, puts up $5,000 for information and... Really? That's yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he was just like, I think he was connected to Mary Orlando. If oh, I remember, okay. I do think there is some huh. six degrees to the family. Interesting, I didn't know that. Um, but the, the crime kind of lays dormant. Um, it, it, and how it all, it, it's amazing that it all shakes out this way. But finally, about six months later, uh, two friends come forward to the police and they're just like, we know who did it. We were with them. We yeah. saw him, mm. and it's Chris Bissy. And that's the second time his name's come up. The police have two, what they think are credible eyewitnesses at this point, arrest trial, boom, and that's how. Um, so he is in jail for the rest of his life for those uh, for those two murders. There's not a ton of evidence connecting the crime. No murder weapon was ever found. So um, no no bullet casing, so revolver? There were probably bullet casings, so they probably know the type of weapon, but as far as everything I could see, like, they never... So it, whoever, it was probably dumped somewhere, but um, he maintains innocence entirely, and but on the testimony of the two friends up... So, what their story is, is that they were, I want to say smoking weed that night, which usually does not lead to homicide, but was driving around and for whatever reason was just like, yo, let's swing by Walkout Point. Um, they had no idea he had a gun with them. He was in, they had no idea why they were going there and just hopped out the car, started walking towards the wall, shot two girls, got back in the car yeah. like nothing had happened. Damn, what the fuck, And dude. left. Yeah, the one that was sitting in the back seat next to him mm-hmm. said that they, as soon as they parked at the lookout, they saw the girls, like, in the car, and he just started shooting at one of them, and then he got out and shot yeah. the other one as she was running away. Damn. And they got in the car. Yeah, got, like, nothing. And then they were like, oh, shit, we gotta get out of here. Like, And then they kept their mouth shut because they didn't want, because they were right. scared of him, they well, didn't yeah. want him to come after them. And then finally, like, the parents were like, oh, you gotta call the police, like. You, you have to turn yourselves in. You guys got to figure this out. Did that uh, documentary you watched on this um, bring up any additional details? Yeah, like, they talked about the mother. She was she worked the night shift, and she yes. said, oh, um, mm-hmm. here, I'll give you some money. You can go get fast food. And then as they were leaving, she gave the car keys to her daughter. Her daughter was ecstatic to get to drive. And um, they saw Mary, their neighbor, and was like, hey, come over here. Like, let's go get some fast food. My mom, I'm going to drop my mom off at work, blah, 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 blah. Oh, so that's, like, how it started. They were just, like, getting together to hang mm-hmm. out, and then they went to the lookout to eat. And then they got murdered. And, like, it sucks, like, the mom went to see him when he was arrested and, you mm-hmm. know, in jail. And he just denied everything. Like, mm-hmm. wouldn't even, he just said, like, you know, whatever, I don't care type shit. Like, she made it seem like he was just, like, no... Mm-hmm. There was no remorse there. Mm-hmm. And um, he got up and walked away from her as she was still trying to talk to him. She sat there with him for seven hours trying to figure out seven why. Seven hours. Trying to figure out why those girls were murdered. And he still wouldn't say anything to them. Sometimes there's not a why. Yeah, awful people are just awful people. Yeah. It's a broken thing. Like, some of the stuff that's come out, like, I think what one of the original tips, like, from uh, somebody they interviewed at Frieden was like, oh, yeah, like, I think his name first came out when they pushed him away was someone said like oh yeah she was going to meet him because she owed him money so that's what's so in like that story came from so many different places but yet to this day does not seem and what's absolutely heartbreaking is that if that's not the reason then there really there isn't there one, isn't one. Yeah. it's just like um, a wrong place wrong time like happenstance collision of just and suck. yeah 
Yeah. It just sucks. And uh, the uh, Mary would be my age. And that's wow. what's like... So that's why these stories... Like, that one was was wild in the sense that it was, like, right in your neck of the woods. I mean, it, my age, my grade, same town, same school. Like, yep. mm-hmm. and just the randomness of it is what's yeah. so wild. The mom also said that if, like, they put him in a lineup, she still wouldn't have ever picked him just because of how he looks. Mm-hmm. He just looks like a normal kid. Normal kid. He was only 18. Mm-hmm. You know, like, he's wow. young. Yeah. Seems to be a common thing with... The well, first, all, one, yeah, the first all, one and, and this one. He also young didn't um, like speak like on when he was on trial. Like yeah. he refused to go up on stand. Yeah, and like it's like he didn't care. He literally didn't care. Hmm. What's odd with these, and I didn't think about it until I was putting it all together just the other day, was that all three assailants are high school age. Yeah, in all three cases, there's at least one school age victim, and that, that's when I really started to to hit home. Uh, Issy did make. A little bit of national news or headlines a couple of years after all of this, he found rock music in prison and he became the lead singer of a rock band and VH1 was doing a documentary on like prisoners finding music in in jail and he was featured in an episode called Mu- it was around the time where uh, Behind the Music was really popular so they had an episode that was going to air called Music Behind Bars and he was like featured in it and around here and I do know it made some national news with some of the talking heads just the idea of like you have this double murderer who's convicted and it's yeah, like yeah I, why that, are we that, that he's, gives me he's playing hard. on VH1 are yep. you kidding yes, me yeah, uh, yeah. so I think that's the like, Huge last ick. I ever yeah. heard of yeah him um but yeah i mean that that's 24 months it's crazy that was a wild awful time for the lehigh valley he was sentenced um to two consecutive life terms behind bars without the possibility of parole just want to toss that in there a little sprinkle and i also have that the former da said quote unquote john morganelli Chris, yeah, oh, you're right. Yeah. I saw him on the documentary. Yeah. Christopher Bissy is a psychopath. I don't think he even knows why he did it. And mm-hmm. the documentary that we keep referring to is Evil Lives Here, Shadow of Death, The Lookout yeah. is the episode name. I I'll think all three that. of these... It's pretty good. Um, yeah, yeah. The dad's a badass. He's just Damn. like, you know what? If I saw him yeah. and I had a gun in my hand, I'd shoot his ass. Like, straight up. He said yeah. that. Yeah. And they can, I don't blame him whatsoever. Like Me neither. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, all three of these stories have retellings in some way, shape, or form. Either I know uh, the Freemans were on an episode. I think it was uh, Children Who Kill. Oh, I love and that um, but yeah, so all of these have been. I, I I know why they're not like those episodes aren't talked about in the Lehigh Valley because I don't think people want to always like relive those yeah, or, sure. or it, like you don't get super excited. Yeah, but, and like and the families are still around. Yeah, right. And yeah. Like people are still feeling the impact of this. Yeah. So. And like, I don't think I realized how much until I was prepping for this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How much yeah. that it does affect you. Yeah. If any of you Lehigh Valley listeners want to share a comment or a story, please uh, write in. And uh, again, like you know, we're just presenting everyone with this information. We're not trying to, we're not making a mockery of this. This is just um, you know, things that happen in our own hometown where we're from. And I think the, the message to get away from this is that it, it can happen in your in your town. Mm-hmm. It maybe has happened. And always in be your careful. Town. Like yeah. no matter always. what, be careful, even if you think you're safe. Kiss yeah. your loved ones, hug your loved ones. Yeah. You know. I, I, I told my wife I was gonna do this, so I'm gonna do this now. Yeah, I mean some of these cases it, it definitely like it's Jordan said, be, being safe. Uh, one of the things I to this day took away from the Harvey Robinson situation was uh, my dad used to talk about how one of the biggest mistakes homeowners make is if you have, and this is listeners, anybody that has this situation, uh, be vigilant, uh, first floor air conditioner window units. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the number one ways homes are broken into is that window and that air conditioner aren't really secured. So all you have to do is hold the air conditioner, lift up on the window a little bit, and you're in the home. There was just a homicide in Montgomery County over the weekend that exact way. Um, and my wife sent it to me and I was like, because we were talking about screen windows yeah. and such, and the uh, and the and the thirty years ago, my dad telling me about air conditioners and the fact um, the way it's so my first home, which we were talking about um, when I read this book and couldn't sleep that night. <laughs> uh, I actually, because of my dad, had two uh, like one inch dowels on both sides of my air conditioner on top of the window, mm-hmm. so that that window could not be opened with an air conditioner mm-hmm. in there, uh, and it's just something that's overlooked. Yeah, by I, I there's a spot where I can screw my air conditioner into the lip of the window. Mm. So if you try to lift the window, you're trying to bring a uh, 
16,000 BTU unit yeah. up with it. It's not going to happen. <laughs> not going to happen. And it's, uh, I'm lucky that like the that window is not like at eye level. It's you have to get a ladder. Yeah. Because I'm on yeah, a, little, like I'm a on little, an incline. Yeah, you have a little So steep. the start of the window is like at the top of your head. Yeah. Um, but I so will. So if somebody tries some shit, they're going down the hill and the air conditioner <laughs> could go down on At top least you of have it. a pit bull that can like bark and let well, you know. Yeah. Like, Yo, those, are, <laughs> those are old things like he used to always say, sim- like for the most part, unless they're very, very targeted. Um, he always would say like criminals want the path of least resistance. Mm-hmm. Right. If Easiest you, if, way. Even if you have a motion like most people aren't going to find out what that motion light's there for. Like, yeah. did she turn on the switch or is that a motion light? Let me stand here. They're not going to figure it. They're yeah. not going to wait. The the barking dog, they're not going to nope. wait. Yeah. They're, yeah. Like, he said, even the sticker in the window, ADT protected, like, he said, most of the time. That's what yeah. I have. I have one yeah. on my front. Yeah. yeah. And, and I got uh, I got blink cameras on the front and the back. Yep. So I can see everything. The yeah, same. Light goes on as soon as yeah. there's motion, you yep. know? And same thing. Yeah, I have motion sensor lights on the front yeah. now. Always a good idea to make sure stuff is secure. There are cost-effective ways that you can take to, uh, you know, make sure your house is secure. And just like Jeff said, if you have first floor air conditioning units, make sure the windows are secured in some kind of way. Mm -hmm. Well, Jeff, thank you so much again for coming on the podcast. Uh, This has been... uh, It's been great to see you. It's not great to talk about these stories. Uh, But it's been great to see you and hear everything that's been uh, going on. I know. Last time I ended with a, such a positive story. I ended with the Christmas Eve story of my dad with the uh, uh, old lady that just wanted company. Aww. And um, I was always like, oh, like I, I listened to that podcast, yeah. and I was just like, oh, I'm like, I love that I, I sent the viewer, the listeners home with a, with a, with a, and I'm sitting here right now racking my brain. I'm like, and it's like, what's going on? Give people home with a positive. I know. I'm like, I, I got to go home with a with a positive. Well, have a, let's let's twist it a little bit. Uh, we were talking about this earlier before you came on. Um, instead of talking about your first ever. Uh, Ghost Encounter, you were talking about uh, the previous episode that you listened to, uh, Superstition. So yes. what's a superstition that, okay. uh, that you have? Um, so I'm Pennsylvania Dutch. Hey. Um, so uh, we are the most superstitious of people. <laughs> um, so I, I narrowed it down to a, a good one, I think. Or one I, I know I always adhere to. Um, I You never walk backwards over somebody's headstone. Oh, shit. Whoa, what? I didn't know that. I wonder um, if my friend at work, Val, knows that. She listens. She's an avid listener. She's waiting for this episode because I just talked to her at work about it today. And she, her her grandmother, I think it's her grandmother, she had, like, all these crazy superstitions just like that. So I wonder if she knows that. Because, like, there was one where, like, you have to go in or out the same way you came in or something yeah, weird like that. She yeah. would tell me all these superstitions. And I'm like... I never did anything. Like, I'm screwed. It, <laughs> and it was definitely backwards. It wasn't like, I know you used to hear like a crossing ahead, but it was definitely like if you're in a cemetery and you're like walking backwards, like to watch. As normal and, people and, do and, all and the I time. Think, like, yeah, and I think it was because you were inviting the, the spirit in. Uh, like, I guess they were resting, they were slumbering, and for some reason crossing that headstone uh, was waking them from that slumber and inviting them to, to you. So uh, I definitely revere that. Uh, I am always cognizant of uh, my feet and my awareness in a in a cemetery uh, be- because of that. And I, I thought of that when I was listening to the show. I was like, "What's some weird things I do?" And I'm like, "Oh, I do plenty of weird things." <laughs> um, <laughs> well, thank you all so much for listening. Uh, don't forget, share us around. Um, do you have any crazy or wild? Uh, serial killers or, or murders or, or uh, true crime in your hometown we'd love to hear about it send us in maybe we can do a whole podcast episode on your town or someplace nearby um, and we'd like to hear from you any local listeners please write in and let us know what you thought about the podcast episode if you have a personal story comment you'd like to share with us um, we'd love to hear it and uh, again Jeff thank you so much for coming yeah, back thank on thank you it's yeah, awesome absolutely. Uh, thanks for having me there, there are some teachers from Liberty that just still have an impact on my life today you're one of them Thank you. Uh, Seriously, Holly, Holly all of Erdman. my movies that I watch is because of your... your I've heard. I yeah. love that. I, I love have so Humphrey much. Bogart in my office because of Casablanca, and I love Citizen Kane because of that. Mm. On the waterfront, not really. Halloween. 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 Oh, my God. I'm obsessed. Michael Myers is back on my phone. Like, <laughs> just freaking obsessed. I was... I was off the top of that class the one I always could not believe I love the film anyway how many people love Singing in the Rain and oh how many God, of them love, were high school boys I love that <laughs> that's another like, one give, give, I forgot about Singing in the Rain that's another one uh, uh, I watched that with my daughter who's now five I think we were about four and she 
She loved it. Oh, awesome. that's a good one. That's <laughs> a good one. Dude, I've never yeah. seen Yeah, but like movie. great teachers like you make a huge difference on on uh, on someone's life. I mean, if you, when you when you can make an impact on someone at the high school age, it really does resonate through uh, adulthood. Between you and Holly Erdman, Lisa mm-hmm. Gilliard, mm-hmm. Um, Mr. Bittner. Yep. You know, these people just made a huge impact I have a on funny my life. story. I got really lazy because I was like, oh, this is a movie class. I'm going to watch movies. Da, 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 da. You know, like just like fucking around. And I didn't do work. And Achenzi's like, here's your big F for the marking period. And I was like, oh, fuck, no, not an F. You know, freaking out. And then I got my shit together and I'm like sitting there watching these movies ready to write my reports. Like, I got super serious after that. And like, look at me now. Now I'm in a lab and, you yeah. know, I self studied. Yeah, self studied for. <laughs> For my certification by myself. Like, oh, yeah. Pass my damn certification. Yeah. It comes yeah. from somewhere. Bad you learn. Game. You have to exactly. learn something. I think, the, I think the film class currently is the one I get most people reaching out from. It's such that a That are just class. like, it's like, oh my God, I watch movies so differently now because of that class. And I was like, that was the whole goal was just to go from passive viewing to active viewing when you're watching. The movie. one with Citizen Kane. That one I was like, literally like, Going on. I was just telling them this. I was yeah. like, what the fuck is going on in this movie? Like, And then the mm-hmm. end, and I'm like, oh, look at the big long table and the rose bird. <laughs> and I was like so depressed after watching it. But it's one of my favorite movies now. It, 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 it takes a little while. Yeah, I didn't appreciate that till a couple of viewings in yeah. and loved it. But yeah, it was great. I had, like I said, the amount of students that are like, I know the, the one, sorry, there's one more. Because yeah. I do remember this caused such a riff one day, though. Um, E.T. was the one. Because one of the last uh, chapters was like the film school generation. So it was like, mm. pick something from the 80s. Like, most of the time, it don't go too rated R. Like, get something with Spielberg. So I was like, well, E.T. is just yeah, so yes. good. And um, a lot of times, the like, students would shut down if they had seen a movie. Which is why I didn't go with the most popular all the time. Because you didn't want a kid to be like, I've seen it done right and uh but et was the one i'm like i'm sticking with it because if you haven't seen it you need to see it and if you've seen it like you're still gonna love that movie so i would always drop in little ways to watch movies other ways if you've seen it already so uh et the two that i'd love to sprinkle in there was um is first of all is et um just a stand-in for the absent father like that's mm, a, a yeah. great way to watch that and you can of course it's there um, and the other one was and I always say like why when it pops up in film we, we seem to like those movies at The Matrix is an example but I'm like E.T. is Jesus and <laughs> it is just if I you, if you look at that. how much of the biblical story lines up with mm-hmm. E.T. not that E.T. looks like or any uh, of yeah. that it's yeah. not sacrilege it's just that, like I say some of the reasons why I think we like E.T. is because it lines up so well with the biblical story and we it's like, like it's stuff that we're all like archetypal things yeah, that we like that story like, for and I remember a student one time that just thought it was so blasphemous and I was like no uh, I'm not making fun of anything like the point I'm trying to make is like we like this because we recognize that the, the, the Matrix with Neo being Jesus was another like super popular. Um, I guess I should say Wachowski sisters now, not brothers making that movie. But um, yeah, like that was another one. I said, I think people like liked the Matrix so much it was a cool movie. Anyway, yeah. but there was that underneath of like it is. It's the Messiah story. Yeah. Like so. Anyway, it's yeah. It's interesting. But, yeah, like breaking it down and having different takes on movies definitely drew me in personally. Because some of the things that you would talk about, I'm just like, damn, I didn't think of that. Or I didn't know that this was like, it like pop out like, oh yeah, in 1979, this was the last time we had this happen. And like it was like a little swipe in the screen <laughs> instead of it just going black. Like he would just like talk about something. I'm like, damn, that's pretty freaking cool. Mm-hmm. So it's like a di- whole different way of getting you like motivated to yeah. literally pick something apart. The but speaking of motivation, yeah. your, Which I like. what was it? Cere- Video games, pajamas, Cereals, pajama, Nintendo. <laughs> Wasn't there spaghettis and SpaghettiOs in there? Nope, cereal, cereal, cereal pajamas cereal, and Nintendo. That, that, uh, Yo, you gave that speech at the last day of class, yeah. and I mean the gist of it is just don't rot in bed, <laughs> don't be that person. Yeah, was, Do something with your life. Yeah. It, the the subtitle to it was how to achieve all your goals in life when you've never had any. Wow, I could use that. Um, well, that was the point <laughs> of it. Was really like realizing. Uh, my wife hates when I say it because here I am like I'm married with two degrees and two children and I've kind of done some stuff 
never wanted to do anything in my life. <laughs> like, not <laughs> once. I, I love everything that I've done. Like, I, I, I think I can smile every single day. I can talk about this stuff because it makes me appreciate the good stuff, the bad stuff, that is, that we yeah. talked about earlier. And that was the, the premise of Serial's Pajama and Nintendo because if you asked me, like, what my goal in life, that is it. Like, and I achieved it when I was 12. There you go. Um, and there is just, like, in order to, like, achieve your goals in life when you've never had any, it is just internalizing that idea that if cereal, pajama, and Nintendo is all you're aspiring to, you're going to miss out on the world. You're the, you know, we only get one crack at this as far as I know. And just the, the cereal was you know find what you enjoy you know as much as you can I love cereal and and pajamas was the idea about being comfortable but also mm-hmm. understanding sometimes you're going to have to wear uncomfortable clothes and Nintendo because life is fun yeah yeah um, and you know I, I the, the, the way I break it down sometimes is I say we're on a giant rock spinning at several thousand miles per hour while that rock is flying through space around a gigantic ball of gas. And the fact that all of this works is stupid. (laughs) (laughs) So I, like, if that doesn't make you wake up every single day happy, every single day smiling... I don't know what else to tell you because, yeah. it, it, I mean, that was the gist. Sorry, all these yeah. years late, <laughs> you might need to hear it again. Um, but no, like, none of this makes sense. And that is all. that is the beauty. Like, the fact that, you know, every single one of us sitting here is a miracle and there is no reason for any of us to exist. <laughs> yeah, uh, is that's... The, it's is, so true. It's so the true. Biggest motive. But you know what? You yeah. did it again. You ended the episode on, on, a, a, nice on a positive, note. nice note. Good job. Um, Didn't know how you Unfortunately, we are out of time for... T- <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how you were going to salvage that one, Hannah says. Oh, yep. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> you're deep. You're Where were you deep. on our asylum episode? Because <laughs> yeah. I was a fucking shambles, yeah. dude. Unfortunately, we are out of time for today. Um... Please give us five stars wherever you're listening, and thank you all f- who are listening. Um, we just got a new Patreon s- subscriber, so Woo! shout out to you. You are wonderful. Thank Come to Patreon you. for uh, ad-free episodes, early access, and uh, some extra content from us, because we'd like to give you some uh, you know, some nice free stuff if well, you're a some, Patreon some. subscriber. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that's all the time we have for today. Stay spooky. Stay safe. And kiss your loved ones, man. Goodbye. <laughs> you, can, you can say an outro. You want to say an outro? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. No. I love that. <laughs> Goodbye.